Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, the Airbus A320neo made its first flight Thursday morning. The FAA approves Aspen Synthetic Vision trial period, and Garmin completes first flight of the BeachJet 400A featuring G5000. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Things went off as planned in Toulouse, France Thursday morning when the A320neo made its first flight. First reports after the flight indicated that everything went as planned. The NEO, which stands for New Engine Option, represents the Airbus bet that a need for better fuel economy will be the force to drive orders for this variation of the single-aisle A320. Airbus began taking orders for the re-engined single-aisle airliner in late 2010, and it currently has about 3,250 of the planes on its order books. Cutter Airways is the launch customer for the plane, which is currently expected to enter service in 2015. Airbus has produced a three and a half hour video of the lead up to the flight, followed by the after flight celebration that can be found on YouTube. The FAA has approved Aspen's offer of a free 10 in flight hour trial of its Evolution Synthetic Vision, referred to as ESV. All new Aspen EFD-1000 Pro PFD purchasers will receive the free ESB trial with their display. ESB is an optional software upgrade to the Evolution Flight Display System, and it presents a real-time computer-generated three-dimensional view of terrain, obstacles, and traffic. The synthetic terrain rendering on the PFD simulates the view from the cockpit on a bright day, so it's especially helpful in providing enhanced situational awareness when flying during conditions of reduced visibility. ESB comes standard with an integrated terrain warning system that combines terrain and flight path marker coloring, caution and warning test, and an audio warning alert when terrain or obstacle collision is imminent. After these messages, we'll hear about the Garmin 5000's first flight on the BeachJet 400A. Stay tuned. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to support Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Garmin has completed the maiden flight of the BeachJet 400A, featuring the G5000 integrated flight deck. This marks a significant step towards completion of the G5000 upgrades for the popular BeachJet 400A and Hawker 400 XP. On the 63-minute flight, the crew performed an initial checkout of the G5000 system and its flight instruments. During the flight, the crew also engaged and evaluated the autopilot and yaw damper. The Garmin G5000 integrated flight deck for the BeachJet 400A and the Hawker 400 XP features three high-resolution 12-inch flight displays, along with two touchscreen display controllers, which serve as the primary crew interface to the system. The company says the G5000 modernizes the cockpit, increases aircraft utility, provides additional weight savings, exceeds next-gen requirements, and solves part obsolescence concerns. STC certification for the G5000 integrated flight deck in the BeachJet 400A and Hawker 400 XP is targeted for approval in the fourth quarter of 2015. 
It's Friday at last, and that means it's time for our weekly barnstorming commentary. Today, Jim interviews Rick Perry, the AEA Vice President of Government and Industry Affairs, to get his views about the pros and cons of the FAR 145 rule changes. This is important information about aircraft maintenance. Here's this week's barnstorming. Some changes were made recently in regards to uh, the 145 rule and looks like a little bit of mixed blessings. Can you address what we can realistically expect from the new rule? We, the public, really captured a lot of the challenges of difference ratings, the industry, uh, the rating system didn't address the industry. All of those things went away. Um, what resided, though, were some critical issues. First of all, the FAA really ratcheted up the regulations on falsification. It is regulatory now that you can lose your certificates for lying and falsifying records. They've cleaned up some of the application regulations. If you are one of the challenges of this industry, you're going to be challenged to keep a certificate and you're going to be challenged to get a new one. Where the shops do have to pay attention though is that there's some subtle changes in the qualification of supervisor and in final inspectors in that there was an error in the original 2001 rulemaking where the lawyers eliminated appropriately rated and the regulators put it back in. And so now the rule says that you have to have appropriately certificated mechanics and repairmen. In the avionics industry, you don't think much about that except a certificated mechanic has certain limitations and one of them has to do with instruments. So an airframe mechanic quite possibly would not be an appropriately certificated mechanic for certain instrument jobs. There's a subtle change to the training program that said not only do you have to have a training program, you actually have to use it. But really, that's about the scope of it. There's subtleties to it. It'll mean changes to our programs. It might mean some changes in the language of our repair station manuals, but nothing that isn't realistic and justified. The German Navy has grounded 22 Sea Lynx helicopters due to what was described as a recurring fault discovered in the tail boom of the aircraft. The fault is reportedly a tear or a hole about eight inches long that was first noted on a Sea Lynx MK-88A aircraft deployed aboard a German aircraft carrier. This led to precautionary inspections on other aircraft, which uncovered additional similar but less advanced problems. The German Defense Ministry confirmed that the 22 aircraft are currently grounded. It hopes to be able to return the helicopters to service early in 2015. After the break, we'll take a look at alleged pilot resignation at Allegiant Air. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. According to Teamsters Local 1224, pilots at Allegiant Air are voting with their feet. In a release to the media, the union says that a significant number of pilots have recently left and more indicate they are planning to leave Allegiant Air in pursuit of greener pastures. It's reported that even senior captains with many years invested have been leaving in increasing numbers for companies luring them with better and safer operations, better working conditions, better schedules, and increased compensation and benefit packages. The pilots and the unions representing them claim they are urging the management team to address the underlying conditions of the root of the crew shortage. Local 1224 President Daniel Wells said in part, quote, we want to work with the management team at Allegiant Air to build an airline where pilots will want to come and stay, end quote. Well, if you can snowboard, skateboard, and wakeboard, how about wingboarding behind a plane? Imagine being towed through the air behind an airplane, just like a wakeboarder or water skier being towed behind a boat. Well, that's the general idea behind the wingboard, which is being developed by Aaron Wipsensky. Wipsensky calls the wingboard a wakeboard in three dimensions that combines wakeboarding, skydiving, and wingsuit flying. 
permitting riders to carve through the air while being towed behind an airplane. The Phase 1 prototype is a 1-6 scale model using a remote control airplane towing the wingboard with a 3D printed human model on board. Wibsensky claims the prototype has proven the aerodynamic stability and control of the design. Next up is work on a Phase 2 prototype, a 40% scale model, and a final stepping stone toward the development of the full-scale prototype. Well, that's our program for September the 26th. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And remember, there are some huge upgrades coming soon to Airborne, starting with a daily schedule early next year. Plus, much, much more. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.